Ten years ago, Megan Zippen crossed the Boston Marathon finish line just as the first bomb exploded. WBC's Jordan Jagelinzer tells us that Megan's children and her poetry were the medicine that really healed her. Survivors don't write love letters to their bombers. We post lost signs on neighborhood telephone poles. This has to be about trying. Trying. It's something simple for most of us, something we do every day without really thinking about it. But for Megan Zippen, trying became a method of survival after crossing the Boston Marathon finish line in 2013. As soon as my foot hit the finish line was when the first explosion happened. When the second one happened, that's when my brain kind of dropped into this space of, like, this, this is not normal something is not okay um is it going to happen again and then also like oh my god the girls the girls two of her closest friends who just moments before were blowing her kisses on the sidewalk cheering her on i knew they were in the sidewalk i knew they were in the smoke but i couldn't I couldn't see them. Her friends suffered life-threatening injuries that day. While Zippin didn't have any physical injuries, her life was changed forever. Zippin has struggled with survivor's guilt, PTSD, and severe anxiety since that moment. If you talk about survivor's guilt, like, it basically was that there was just more people around me to absorb the injuries before they got to me. She suffered from near daily panic attacks, searching for a path forward. When the sidewalk blows up that you're walking on, it's hard to walk on the sidewalk and think that it's not going to blow up again. The first step in Zippin's healing process, delivering a victim impact statement at Johar Sarnayev's trial right here at Boston Federal Court. It was important for me to see him. She says the experience wasn't empowering, but scary and nerve-wracking, having to face someone who harms not just her, but her loved ones. One of the things uh, during the trial that I said to the bomber was that one day my husband and I are going to be a better mother and a better father because we're going to show our kids all that's good in this world. And that's exactly what the Zippin family has done, welcoming three boys into the world, focusing on enjoying the little moments, enjoying the good. I have a different flavor of joy than I had before the events. In the last 10 years, she's turned her pain into poetry. Over the course of about seven or eight years in my phone at night, I would just make little notes. Notes that became not just rhythms, but a source of comfort and therapy when her PTSD manifested at night. Survivors write love letters. We grow bigger hearts. We feel deeper gratitude. And you talk about your, your three boys. Mm -hmm. How do you plan on one day telling them how the bombings changed you? One day I will tell them that they are the magic that helps like, turn their mama around her boys a reminder of life's greatest blessings giving her the push she needed to be present mama see the trees in the forest they blowing it's so beautiful mama you are my best mama three little angels the first light to beam through at the end of a dark tunnel i'm not going anywhere i'm here Wow, and I just, that is so powerful, the idea of the different flavor of joy, the new flavor, and the magic of those children. I'm so glad you said that <laughs> phrase, because that's the phrase that struck me, a different flavor of joy. It's nice to see the smile on her face after what has obviously been not just an extremely tough day that day, but the 10 years have followed. So many people still battling the scars from that day. Yeah, and we can all support one another. No question. And it's beautiful. Megan's book of poems, First Light, comes out on April 15th, one Boston day. We'll be right back.